What's going on guys, welcome back to my pastoral channel, welcome back to another transfer video for you guys today. In this video we're going to be talking about Kai Havertz and whatever is still halting this transfer from going across the line. We're also going to be talking about Frank Lampard's pulling power and another potential Chelsea target that's spoken about their admiration for Frank Lampard. And we're going to round things off with Leeds and Mishi Batshuayi and growing speculation over his reunion with Marcelo Bielsa. But before I start this video, as usual, I want to say if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that subscribe button and press that like button as well. And don't forget to hit that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any content. That's just three simple things. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button and press the bell notification button as well. Let's go straight into the transfer news. We're going to start with Kai Havertz. We have been speculating on this transfer for weeks or months now. We've seen other suitors fall out of the race for Havertz. We've seen this become a one-man race for ages. And right now, there's just one thing sorting, uh, stopping this deal from going through. Parcel terms have been agreed weeks ago between Havertz and Chelsea. The contract was agreed until 2025 as well. Like we said previously, Bayern, Bayern Munich have fallen out of the race because they pushed most of their money towards Sane and now they need to sell in order to buy. Uh, Real Madrid were also interested, but they've got so many midfielders on their table, they need to sell in order to buy as well. So it's been a clear one-man race for Kai Havertz and Chelsea. And Kai Havertz has gone increasingly positive and more fond of the Chelsea project. And he's got more interest in this deal as well. So everything has fallen into Chelsea's hands. But the one thing that we are still waiting for is the agreement on the transfer valuation. Now, Bayer Leverkusen view him at around 100 million euros. Chelsea right now have only pushed it up to 80 million euros. There's still around 20 million euros off the valuation for Kai Havertz. Leverkusen and Chelsea are still in talks though. It's nothing like Leverkusen have stopped talks with Chelsea, just said 100 million or nothing. They do, they have said 100 million or nothing, but they are still in negotiations. I think Chelsea are trying to make up that 20 million through either installments or add-ons or bonuses, but they are still in negotiations. Leverkusen, however, have given Chelsea nine days to complete this transfer. They have said that they have till the 28th of August before this transfer can't be completed. And if I think the reason why is because Leverkusen is returning back for pre-season training on the 28th of August. And in the eyes of Leverkusen, they don't want to have their best assets still in the club, still be in transfer negotiations when this has been dragging for months and months. And then have to sell him with a week or two left of the transfer window or something like that. Where they now have to rush for a replacement. And by the way, try replacing Kai Havertz as well. That's a, that's a mission in itself. But trying to replace Kai Havertz with about a week or two left of the transfer window. Also knowing that they're going to get bent over a barrel once they try and look for replacements. Because everyone knows that they're going to have money. Because we've just given them that sort of money. You can see why they're trying to push this sort of deal. And why they're trying to push us more to just pushing the deal through. Because... This could have been done ages ago. I'll be real. We are trying to be a bit stingy on this. We are trying to penny pinch a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. Like That's Marina's specialty. She knows how to get maximum profit and maximum value for money as well. But we have to be careful. We do have to be very careful of taking too long. If we want to use uh, the Jadon Sancho and Manchester United deal as an example, that one's been on the table for months. We're one of the rivals that have fallen out the race because of our interest in Werner and Ziyech and Havertz. So and now it's to the point where do we even have space for Jadon Sancho on our side? It's been all Manchester United's to lose in this case. And Manchester United have been taking so long on this sort of deal that I think now by um, Dortmund are doing the same thing Leverkusen are doing. It's just like, okay, if you guys want to take so long, we don't necessarily have to sell Jadon Sancho. And in the case of Jadon Sancho as well, he doesn't necessarily want to push for a move either. I think Jadon's happy to wait for another year. Everyone was saying it could be likely Sancho stays for another year as well with the whole pandemic and everything that's happened in 2020 as well. So this isn't completely out of the blue, but we don't want to stall this deal for too long because what happens with Sancho and Dortmund could easily end up happening with us. Everything is on the table especially compared to how United had it on the table with Sancho. I think there's still a lot more that they have to complete compared to what we do. We basically got everything else on the table. We just have to agree on a fee do the medical and it's done but we just need to be quick about it. I'm starting to feel a little bit paranoid I can't lie because it's nine days. That's under two weeks. This can happen and it will be a gassed up day when it happens. The whole timeline is going to be screaming when this happens. Oh, or they'll just be like, 
finally. But same way, let's just push this deal over the line before we take too long and Leverkusen get a bit too brave and they think, yep, we can hold on to this guy for another season. Because part of this whole thing was that Havertz wanted to go as well. A big part of this is that he didn't want to stay at Leverkusen for the season. Don't force their hand because... I don't think he's going to force a transfer out there either. It's just one more year in the case of him too. Let's just get this transfer over the line. Moving on to our next piece of news. And we're going to be talking about another player that's linked with Chelsea. That has spoken about their admiration of Frank Lampard. And let me just tell you something. This guy's pulling power is crazy. If it's not Oblak saying that he would consider a Chelsea offer. It's Kai Havertz pushing to join Chelsea. Or it's Timo Werner saying that he joined Chelsea to play under Frank Lampard. But now... It's Jose Jimenez, another Chelsea target that has spoken about their admiration for the midfielder. And he said, I would love to have played with Lampard. He's a player I admired and in Uruguay, when I was still young, the Premier League matches were in the morning, I would wake up and watch Chelsea, who is a team I adored watching. Big for a team with no fans, that's all I want to say, and a team with no history, that we have so many players now who are talking about watching Chelsea back in the day, watching Lampard, Zola, Drogba, JT in his prime, but we have no history, I'm just saying. This isn't Jimenez to Chelsea confirmed or anything like that. I'm not going to hear try, try and push some clickbait story that, yeah, we're going to get Jimenez now, Jimenez is confirmed. Not really, but it's positive. This is a target Chelsea are interested in. This is only positive because he has spoken positively about Chelsea. It does sound like he is open to a move and he would love to work under Frank Lampard. But there are still plenty of things that we need to do. Like we said from that Matt Law report weeks ago, once we get Havertz across the line, we are looking at signing a left back first, then a goalkeeper, then a centre back. But we also need to sell to buy in those positions. So there are still plenty of works that need to be done. Emerson to Inter Milan is looking close, which means that that's going to be that one left back gone. And it does look like Ben Chilwell is going to be the left back that comes in to replace him. Us. We are going to have to wait to sell a defender first. We've said before, Kurt Zuma is the only defender that has been receiving any offers recently. But he's also the only defender that I think, hand on heart, we have to keep. Bar anyone else. Uh, Rudiger is rusty. Christensen, last chance saloon for me. But if you man sold him as well, I wouldn't really complain too much about it. Zuma is the only one that's looked consistent. Zuma also does look a little bit shaky, I can't lie, but... He's growing, he's getting better, and out of the, the centre-backs that we have, he still looks like the best one by a mile. But moving back on to the Jose Jimenez rumours, this, this window, very unlikely. Uh, Atletico do need to sell, and I do think if we could lower it, lower the transfer valuation, it could happen, but we would need to seriously lower it. The, trans the release clause, I think, is 120 million, which is the same as Jan Oblak, and I'll be real with you straight up, he isn't worth 120 million. I say if we could get half of that maybe it would be a good deal maybe lower it down to 50 maybe i don't know but 120 million 80 million anything like that no no like we're spending so much money already like that's just a oh, terrible idea the right fee i would take him but only for the right fee is a quality center back and he would improve our team but if you're talking about anything over 70 million, I'm expecting Virgil van Dijk or something very close to that. I don't think I'm going to see that with Jose Gimenez. Final piece of news today, Leeds and Mishi Batshuayi. This is getting more and more steam. Mishi has one more year left on his contract and he isn't in Lampard's plans for next season. And in the eyes of Chelsea, they will sell him to anyone just to get rid of that 100k a week contract off the wage bill. Now, Batshuayi knows Marcelo Bielsa. They work together in say he scored 10 goals in 29 games for for them and if Bielsa thinks he can get the best out of Mishu Batshuayi, go for it. I know when it comes to tactical analysis, I don't think anyone is as strategic as Bielsa or has as much documents as Bielsa. This guy spends hours looking at everybody. The guy reads, lives, breathes, eats, drinks, wherever you want, he does that with football. If there is anyone that can get someone out of get something out of Batshuayi. It's someone who is that detailed, like Marcelo Bielsa. So it might be a good deal for both parties. But you already know my stance when it comes to Batshuayi. Take him, anybody, please, just take him. I've known he's been washed for years. I said this since 1718 when he was so bad. I, whenever he played, I wanted Alvaro Morata on the pitch, and that was saying a lot because Morata wasn't doing much anyway. But 
Anyone who can take Batshuayi, if we can get any sort of semi-decent deal for him, take him. We need to clear the deadwood, and this is big deadwood to clear, so please just do it. But guys, this is the end of my transfer video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the opinions that I've made down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G as well, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Up the chills.